good part without taking away from her. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sharing with the topic, one thing is needful. We have sat to hear the word of God all throughout these days. But there is one thing that is very needful for us to put into practice as we go. From the scripture we have read, I am Jesus to matter. One thing is needful, which Mary had chosen. And I'm also keying into that instruction that the master brought to Mary and to Martha. When he visited the house of Martha, she was the first to receive Jesus into her house. As she received Jesus, maybe she gave Jesus a seat in the parlor and Jesus sat down. Of course, Jesus expected that Martha was also going to sit down and listen to whatever brought him to visit their house. But she ran maybe to the kitchen and was looking for what Jesus was going to eat as if that was the major reason for his coming. And we know that Jesus does not visit houses like that. It was a rare opportunity. But she ran away and went into the kitchen and was busy about concerning what the master may want to eat. But we saw that Mary sat at his feet, listening to his word, as he was also hearing from the master's mouth. We saw that the content of what Jesus was speaking to Mary was not made clear because it was a personal instruction, a personal uh, guidance on how her life should be, even for the Lord and for his kingdom. But we saw that Martha missed it and went into much running up and down, thinking Jesus' coming was for physical food. And as Martha continued to run around, run around, she ran back and came to the sitting room again and saw that Mary concentrated to listen to the word of God. And when she now spoke and said, Master, is it that you have allowed by myself alone to serve? And then was commanding Jesus, command Martha or Mary to come and join me in the kitchen. And so Jesus spoke elaborately and said, Martha, Martha, you are bothered about so many things. One thing is needful. So beloved, as music ministers, one thing is very necessary, very, very needful. If you are going to affect our generation, we must pay attention to our closet, our sitting at his feet. We must make it our number one priority. It is this priority that we grant us songs to write that will affect the hearers. It is this priority that will bring instructions that will build our generation. Our generation is in need of divine instructions that we build their lives. All throughout it has been excitement, entertainment, from different singers to another. We saw that gospel music now, many of them don't have impacts. Many of them don't affect lives. They are mostly for entertainment. And we are tired of songs that only bring entertainment not a define, not molding, not shaping, not sharpening the souls of men so that they can feel the presence of God. So sitting at his feet, hearing his word, we cause our life to be built in the divine presence of the Lord so that song that will come out of our effort and out of our singing will be song that will build the lives of men. So, and that's what God wants us to choose. If you are going to affect our generation, if you are not going to be entertainers, if you are not going to just speak and, and meet and people, something is needed. So sit at his feet. That's when something will be formed. As Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, was hearing the word of God in Hebrews chapter. 4, Paul verse 2, the Bible quickly says, I will quickly read it. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And it says, 
is to the of dividing asunder the soul and the spirit of the joint and of is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. The word of God is quick and powerful. The word of God is not slow. It is quick and powerful. The word of God has power to change the lives of men. Even when songs come, the word of God has power to transform, to change the listeners. The word of God has power to build the lives of men. That's why we must sit at his feet to hear his word, to give attention to his word, so that our lives will also be affected. If we are shallow inside, empty inside, whatever comes out of our lives in the world of music will also be shallow and empty. If you are cooked and built inside, what comes out will also build other lives. That's why we must give this singular matter a matter of attention. Sit at his word, study his word. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Be a music minister, do you have time to study the word of God for your own consumption? Do you have time to build your life in this closet with the word of God so that the inspiration that comes will come with power, We come with convicting anointing that changes the lives of a listener? Or do you just browse through the scripture so as to go and just pick one or two verses to, to add to whatever songs you want to compose? When you are shallow inside, the impact of the word of God that comes through our souls will be shadowed. They will not change the lives of men. See, we continue to multiply over and over. And the lives of men, whether in our churches or different settings, will not be heard. So we want to recommend, let's spend time in studying the word of God, in building our lives in the closet. It was one of the cry in the heart of David. When you have time, you can read the book of Psalm. He said, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee in a dry and a living land, in a dry and a testy land where there is no water. My tears have been my meat there and night. Why they continually say, Where is their God? How will you be singing songs? Men cannot touch God and it doesn't bother you. How will you be playing organ? Lives of men are not affected. You are just there as an entertainer. It was a hard cry of David. He pursued God. He sought after God. There at night, he spent night vigils just to know God, just to en en envelop himself with the presence of God. And that's how he was able to receive songs. And he wrote several psalms that has affected our generation. Do you have time to study the word of God? Do you have time to build your life in your, in, in your closet life? Is it just all of entertainment? I saw that Martha sat at his feet and heard the word of God. That was what made Martha, uh, Mary sat at his feet and heard his word. That was what made Mary the person she became. Do you know it was this same Mary that went into the presence of the Lord to anoint him, to prepare Jesus for the burial. She carried that alabaster ointment. That was very precious. She kept it for something glorious for herself. But because she had sat at the feet of the Lord, she must have been hearing and receiving instructions about his crucifixion. And the Holy Spirit was, was the one that timed her. Run to that place, we meet Jesus and anoint him and prepare his body for the burial. That was where she received instruction. And she ran, opened that alabaster ointment box and, and pour it on the head of Jesus. She even used her head and wiped the feet of Jesus as someone who does not even desire to offer this sacrifice. The Lord commanded her. When others were abusing her, why are you wasting this, this ointment? The Lord said to her, leave her alone because she has wrought a good work in me. And whatever she has done shall be spoken as a memorial unto the whole nations of the earth. Was still praising Mary for what she did because she sat at the feet of the Lord. That's where she received divine guidance, divine inspiration. Many times you go and copy another person's song because you 
you must sing and whether whether impactful or not impactful you just sing garbage do you know if your life is full of garbage the bible says garbage in garbage out so many music uh, singers many sing garbage you can't point christ you can't punch christ you can't tap christ from their songs and everything is noise and entertainment that's why god has brought us to this conference to change our orientation so that we can sit at his feet study his word pick instructions that will cause our lives to be well built and to be well formed may the lord help us in jesus name amen what's the second issue i want to raise the second issue is that as she sat at the feet of the lord she developed a life of communion dwelling in his presence a life that she prays and sought the face of god and God opened her eyes. That communion life is critical as a music minister. Your prayer life must not be shallow. Your prayer life must not be empty, it must not be dry. It must not be mechanical. It must be God guiding you. If we look at the scripture in the book of Luke chapter 18, the Bible says, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Are you fainting your prayer life when you kneel down Five minutes, you are okay. But you can see for hours to gist and tell stories. Where your foundation is not solidified, I wonder how far your music will go. I wonder how far the songs God wants to give to you will be able to be received. So we saw a woman who met a king and said, please avenge me of my enemies. The king refused to give her attention. And she didn't leave the, the king alone. She kept troubling the king, troubling the king, troubling the king. That's how God also wants us to trouble him, to come to him in the secret place, to travel and pray till things turn around, till the right song comes. We will not just speak songs from the atmosphere that has not been released. Eh? Precious things are not released to swine. They are released at the feet of the cross because the, the receiver wants to make good use of it. God wants to release songs. But have you prayed to know what is in his heart? Are you just a copycat uh, singer or writer and so on? That's why he has brought us to help our lives so that you can give attention to your prayer life. How many times have you fasted when you discover that your prayer life is going down around the drain and you cry out? I said, Lord, help me. Peter saw that he was sinking in the water when he took off his eyes from Jesus. He cried out. Have you been crying out when you discover you are sleeping on your knees? You are kneeling down to pray and you are sleeping off again, snoring and snoring. So of men that God wants to help through your music life are perishing. I, I, I listened to a song a man of God sang some years ago in Kogiste. It affected me deeply. That was about early 90, around 91 or 92. We had a citywide crusade in Kogi State. I was one of the speakers by the grace of God. There was this man of God, a singer, that was to first sing, present his Elijah, I can still remember him. The man mounted the podium and started singing. I was singing in Igala language. I didn't understand the gala. And he was singing from one song to another without any break or, 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 or stop. He was singing constant. But at the time, the anointing came mightily. The anointing of God came down. I felt it, even though I wasn't understanding what he was sharing or singing, but the presence of God came down. And people started crying while he was still singing. I saw some young brothers, young sisters, girls, men, women. The, so many people in the crowd, they were crying. They were crying. They were crying. And he kept singing. When he finished all his songs, he now left. So I now mounted the podium. And as I mounted the podium, I began to make altar call. As I made altar call, people were coming out in tears. There was no preaching. I didn't preach that night. I saw the power of songs that is backed up with the power of the Holy Spirit, convicting, transforming, changing 
their lives. God can do the same even through your own life, through your own ministry. If you take your communion life serious and you are sharp and determined about it, have you ever gone on a retreat just to build your life in the presence of God? Have you ever gone on a personal retreat? I have it somewhere to go and render. It is because you want to seek the face of God. That's why you have gone for that retreat. It's not because there is a problem. You are just seeking the face of God to build your life so that your life can be formed, so that your life can be built, so that your life can be incubated, so that your life can be sharpened. When you come forth, there's someone coming out, backing it with conviction. We need to enter into this dimension. The singing ministry has been so polluted and about or process. God doesn't want it to be so. With you who have sat at the feet of the master these days, a change can take place if you resolve that I want to take this assignment with all seriousness, with all commitment, so that my church members in, the, in different denominations, God has posted, you have been singing. No revival, no change in the eyes of your members. Are you bothered about it? It's not, it's not only the preaching from the pastor. Even songs from the choir can turn lives of men around. If the choir people will be serious, it has been happening and it can happen again. You can set the pace for others to follow. So because the brethren don't carry a correct life. Thank God God has dealt with that seriously in this meeting. So we need to go into a life of communion with the pastor so that our lives can be transformed, can be built, can be shaped. To become like God. What else do we need? We need the presence of God. The third implement, the presence of God, is what is needed. We may not have time to read Exodus chapter 33, but we all know the story. When the children of Israel misbehaved, God said to them, I will not go with you. I will send an angel to go with you. And Moses said, if you don't go with us, we will not go. And they were all crying and crying and crying for God's presence to go with them. Find that the God accepted, my presence shall go with you. We need performance at every stage, whether you sing in the choir, whether you go outside to minister, we need the presence of God. Also, in the presence of God, when someone sees you, they should see the glory of God. Are you a type that sings and goes to misbehave, even after rendering that powerful song? You are not doing well. We need to carry the presence of God. Both in our lives, even in the ministry God has called us into. Let's not handle that singing ministry with casual attitude. Your life must carry God's presence. A life who carries God's presence is a life who is afraid to fall into sin. Thank God, God dealt with the matter of righteousness. I need to carry his presence. And as Moses carried, when he went to the mountain 40 days, 40 nights, he came down, his face was shining like the face of an angel. You saw the glory of God rested upon his life. When your life and your communion life and your studying the word of God is consistent, the presence of God will accompany our service. Men will touch God. If they escape the word of God, they may not escape the songs we present because they are carrying the presence of God. What else does God want us to carry as a possible and effective implement in the music ministry? God also wants us to place our lives under discipleship training. Discipleship is a training that moves a man's life, transforms him to become like Christ in character, in service, and even in ministry. I, I also saw that in that scripture we read in Luke chapter 10, you know, Jesus came to that house as their disciple. Uh, instead of Martha sitting down to listen to the disciple, she ran away to go and do more serving as if the disciple was interested. So we need to also walk with the Lord, submit our lives to hands that God can mold us and shape us into his image. You don't need to be a free ranger. You only have people you can always consult. It's not consultation. It's to submit the molding, the training, the correcting of your life to a hand that God can choose to mold you. That's discipleship. And you are molded into his image, into his character, into his nature, into his form, not that of your own. You are dead to flesh. You are dead to sin. You are dead to personal interest, personal ego. You are following Christ and growing from one degree of glory to another into his final image. So as a music minister, you cannot run away from discipleship. Discipleship is different from mentorship. Mentorship only deals with your 
head and your skills, it doesn't change your character. It doesn't change your mannerism. You can live anyhow. As far as you carry the skill, discipleship is a training of your life, training of your character to become like Christ in every aspect. So we need to submit our lives to discipleship making. Let the Lord mold me. Let the Lord mold you. I saw in Exodus chapter 24, the story of Moses and Joshua. God invited Joshua, I mean Moses, into the mountain. And he went to the mountain and was. That was where God decided to give him the law. And you know, because this servant of his, Joshua was always following Moses. Even though God did not invite Joshua, but he invited his master. He quickly followed his master and carried his back. And they were all on the mountain. As they got to the mountain, they didn't know it was going to last for 40 days. Joshua endured every situation, every hardship he experienced on the mount. Joshua was not complaining, was not grumbling, no place to sleep, no bed to sleep on, you know, maybe no water to bed, and so on. He endured whatever he faced on the mountain. As a music minister, you should be ready to follow a life that God has raised so that your life too can be made into his image. You need a disciple that God has molded. You can't run your life alone. You can't be a free ranger. Go anywhere you like. And when you go, you go and give conditions. I must take this kind of honorarium and so on and so forth. You go through every challenge, every situation your disciple too may face. Or you can also be, because I've already been molded into his image. Remember Jesus said, the son of man, we all know about. Anyway, so we saw that. Moses and Joshua, they want them to imagine in chapter 24, verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me into the mount and be there, and I'll give thee tablets of stone and a law and commandments, which I have written, and thou mayest teach them. And Moses rose up, and his minister Joshua, and Moses went up into the mount of God. And he said unto the elders, tarry ye here for us, until we come again unto you. And behold, Aaron and Hor are with you. If any man have any matters to do, let him come unto the dead. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount, and the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud, and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. You could see experience Moses had on the mount, 40 days and 40 nights. His disciple was there. He didn't complain. He didn't murmur. Even when God was not talking to him directly, he was not offended. He was not wounded inside. He secretly learned how to hear from God through his disciple, he secretly learned how to be on the mountain, not for pleasure, just to be with God for 40 days and 40 nights. How would Joshua not become a man that he became, who led Israel to enter into the purpose of God in their own generation? Are you planning to be a useful vessel in God's hand? You can't be a free ranger. He knows you see God, my friend. I want to advise you. <laughs> Seek for your own molding for your own transformation through a trusted disciple who will handle you with the fear of God. I saw that Moses was there, they were talking, and that's how he received the law that has become a blessing to all of us. Do you want to receive something that your generation will never forget? That's why from time to time, you need to be on the mount, you need to seek his face in prayer, in fact, Thing so that he go pass through you, give you songs or give you instructions that will be a blessing to our generation. It doesn't come under a pressure atmosphere. Are you a brother that is so gifted, anointed? Even when you are singing, you have retinue of guests around you and you are not able to speak discipleship into their lives and your life is perforated. They are gradually falling into lust, but the Lord deliver you. Something that is precious that God has given to you. It must not be handled with levity. 
I saw that Joshua was with Moses. He didn't allow anybody to distract him from the presence of God. So you need discipleship to mold you. Sometimes people run away from discipleship because if they believe there is discipline, yes, you need that discipline. You don't need to be a free ranger. You know, sometimes decisions will seem powerfully, but when the word of God comes, they run away, go and stand outside. That's in discipline. You need to be disciplined. That's why discipleship we help to shape you to also sit down and listen to the word of God. Not only dancing, not only jubilating and so on. We need discipleship that will mold us and shape us into his image. You can pick another quick example. If you look at the case of Ruth in Ruth chapter 1, Ruth and Naomi, we saw that that young lady married and her husband died. Naomi's also, husband also died. And they were returning into the land of Bethlehem of Judah. Then Sister Ruth told uh, Naomi that, ah, I will go with you wherever you are. That's where I will be. Please permit me to also read Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. But whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and then will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if all but dead, but thee and me. When she saw that, she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. We saw how Ruth clung to Sister Naomi. Said, ah, all this while, your life has affected me. I was a mobile woman. I have left my gods. I'm now following the God of the Jews. As I'm returning back to Bethlehem of Judah, I want to go with you. Naomi said, no, go back. I don't have any more son. It's not an issue of marriage. That woman said, it's not the issue of marriage. It's the issue of affecting my life so that I can be a, a blessing to my generation. So she followed Naomi. Say, where you go, I will go. That's what discipleship entails. Going where God is going. Going where your disciple is going. Your disciple cannot go this direction and you are taking opposite direction. That's not discipleship. So Ruth was determined to go. He said, even where you die, that is where I will also die. I know that woman made up her mind to follow and follow with all her heart and follow Naomi to the Bethlehem of Judah. You know the whole story. Eh? A woman that we didn't even know what will happen to her and how will she be married again. Of course, she got married to Boaz by God's divine arrangement. Eh? And she entered into the purpose of God and she became one of the grandmothers of our Lord Jesus Christ. He entered into the purpose of God. Do you want to be useful, my brother? Whether you are a sister or a brother, why not throw your life into discipleship training so that your life can be molded? You can't be a surface Christian. Being a surface musician, how far will you go? What can you bring to help your generation? Is it to just remain entertainer? God forbid, throw my whole life just to entertain people and your clap hands. That's why we need to be cooked when our life is done. Then the aroma we break for, which God has been speaking to us. That's why we need God to help us follow him in discipleship with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our energy. Don't be one leg for Christ, one leg for the other side. You will become a great loser. It will not help you arrive at God's destination. Then the last person I also want to share briefly is discipleship relationship that took place between Paul and Timothy. So if you go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, you will get that story. Acts chapter 16, from verse 1. Then came he to Debe and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there, named Timothy, the son of a certain woman which was a Jewess, and believed that his father was a Greek. There's two, which was well reported of by the brethren, that were at least an iconium. Him would Paul have to go with him 
he took and took and circumcised him because of the Jews and were in those quarters, which were in those quarters, for they knew that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. We saw Timothy also, who was following his master. He was a good believer, a good disciple. We were just serving the Lord, had a good testimony, but he was not trained. He was not discipled. At the time, Paul was traveling to Odebe and Lystra. He met his brother. And as he was led by the Holy Spirit, Paul took him. said, follow me. And there's something God wants to do in your life that will make your life effective and powerful in the hand of God. Timothy did not argue. Imagine the call came suddenly. No enough preparations for him. He just quickly left and followed Paul from one place to another. Timothy did not say, well, you know, I can't just follow you like that. I have plans of my own. I have decisions of my own. He let go. If you must be a correct disciple, you will let go your plans. You will let go your dreams. Let the Lord work it out. Let the Lord guide you. I believe no disciple who want to damage your life. Rather, they will help your life better as they carry you into the purpose of God effortlessly. But if you want to do it by yourself, you may not arrive at that destination. Sometimes you may arrive somewhere, but your life is already damaged. I saw how Timothy followed Paul from one place to another. He was a young brother. If you had time to study the life of Timothy and the discipleship relationship, he later became a minister, eh? a fellow co-laborer with Paul. Something rubbed upon his life. That's why he's given a book in the scriptures, first and second, Timothy, because he left everything to follow his disciple. So I want to encourage you. Discipleship is very important. It's very critical. Let's pursue it with all our strength, with all our heart. Even if this is the first time of hearing about discipleship, you need to ask God to explain it further. You need to meet lives that have been affected by discipleship so that they can help you to enter into it. And as you enter into it, don't do it half exactly. Let it overwhelm you because it's a training that will bring something fruitful, something effective even for your life in the course of pushing your destiny. So we saw discipleship has several people in the Bible, even Timothy's case. Timothy was helped. If you are going to be helped, you need to pursue discipleship of your own life, discipleship of your own training, because it is in that discipleship songs will come. And when the songs come, your life will be transformed. The songs will become songs that minister revival to other lives. Don't be a free ranger. Don't be an observer. When God makes your life, he will use you to make other lives or other lives. And our main minister also is a disaster to his audience. When you are not made, what are you singing for? What are you impacting other lives with? Nothing. I want to be trained so that my life can be made. So that will become a blessing to my generation. God is looking for such humble, contrite, and broken heart of men that he can make. I pray that God will help you to respond even this morning. And we are going to pray together. But I want you to join me to sing this song as we are going to pray shortly. Yeah. My song says, Lord, make me a practical instrument for you. Make me, O oh Lord. Lord, make me a practical instrument for you. Make me, O oh Lord. Can you join me, Lord? Make me a practical instrument for you. Make me, O oh Lord. Lord, make me a practical instrument for you. Make me, O oh Lord. Lord, make me, Lord, make me a practical instrument for you. Make me, O oh Lord, Lord, 
may be a practical instrument for you. Make me, oh Lord, sing it two more times. Lord, make me a practical instrument for you. Make me a practical instrument for you. Make me, oh Lord, Lord, make me a practical instrument for you. Make me, oh Lord. Father, this is our cry this morning, that you will make us. We know how you make your men through the process of discipleship, through the word of God, through a communion life. Our heart cry this morning is, Lord, make us. Don't let us be casual over this implement you used to make your men. Thank you, Father, for helping our lives. Thank you for speaking to us. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you.